Now for more, we're now joined by political analyst Professor Somato Dafigeni live from our studios in Pretoria. Prof, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now this is not the first controversy um, after Helen Zilla retweeted a comment by late Alistair Sparks. Why is she always seemingly putting, uh, well, doing the wrong thing, clearly? Will not be written by the well, I do think that uh, it exposes something that we have not put under the microscope some sections of what was called the English-speaking white liberal section of the population have not been under scrutiny because we often associated racial prejudice with your Africana conservative sections of the population. Now, Helen Zill playing the card that she was a reporter in a progressive newspaper has gone further to be so prone to some of these, uh, you know, racially prejudiced comments. And I do think that uh, it is precisely a reflection of what she thinks. Now, the DA appears to be battling to deal with what its members post on social media, uh, looking at Diane Cola Barnard and former member Penny Sparrow, who are also caught on the wrong side of social media comments. What's your take on that and their policies around that? Well, I do think that it will put pressure on the DA leadership to do something. Of course, they'll be mindful of the fact that this is a leader of a DA and uh, he, he, she's not the kind of a person that you will simply discipline without political ramifications. But at the same time, uh, if nothing is done, then DA will have to live with the albatross of being stigmatized as a racist party and it will struggle to penetrate the black voters. Now, Prof, let's look at reaction to the tweet by Helen Zilla, uh, where DA leader Musi Maimane said that this might hurt the party come 2019 and those elections. Is that the case? Can we see that happening? Without any doubt, remember that uh, DA has been battling with the accusations that it was harboring people who have racial prejudice. And as such, if you start having all these different personalities, such as Cola Barnard, Penny Sparrow, and many others, and most importantly, its leader, Helen Zilla, uh, doing the same thing, it will open the DA to a difficult scrutiny by the society. And it will also put the EFF in an awkward position where it had landed some of its votes for the DA in the metros to say that uh, the party that we are going along with is a party that still has what uh, we stand against. And that in itself, I think, will harm the DA on both levels. Come 2019, DA will struggle to shackle off these accusations. Prof, let's look at the possible outcomes of this disciplinary action against Helen Zilla. What can we see happening? Well, I doubt they will go for an outright disciplinary process, or even if they do, I doubt they may ultimately find her guilty, except a slap in the wrist and say, make a public apology. Or they may even have a plan to make sure that she doesn't go on a social tweet without uh, any editing and scrutiny by the party. But uh, the damage is done because other people of lesser positions have already been held through the coal. Uh, and if she is seen to be exempted from that process, it will cause a lot of rancor within the party. But at the same time, if action is taken against her and she is forced to step down, the reaction from the core supporters of the DA and the funders may actually be negative. So you do, you damned, you don't, you damned. Now, Prof, just finally, I mean, we've seen how uh, the DA leader, Musi Maimane, has condemned the social media post by Helen Zilla. How do you think this will affect his leadership going forward, depending on what happens in this process? Well, I do think that he is in an awkward position because when she, he ascended to that position, he was seen as being the poster boy of Helen Zeal, 
and uh, many people believe that in fact she didn't he didn't have the real power and uh, Helen Zill and others were the ones who had pushed him forward to be the face of blacks in a party that was desperate to get the black constituency now he has to stand up and demonstrate that he is his own man and that has all kinds of risk inherent in it Prof, just finally, I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, racially motivated incidents taking place in South Africa recently. What do you think needs to happen um, to eradicate this? I mean, it's been a long time. I do think that a strong political leadership in the country that will emphasize both redress of the past as well as the issue of national unity in a clearly articulated manner is key. And at this moment when the leading party has its own internal challenges, the opposition have their own weaknesses, that is unlikely to happen soon. The second one, I do think that the strength, strengthening of laws which make racism a punishable crime might also help in a sense, but ultimately the society need to have an open, difficult conversation about its past because that has not been done. Hence, these particular sporadic incidents are coming up to the surface. Prof, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. That was political analyst Professor Somato Dafigeni speaking to us from our studios in Pretoria.